All right, so before we get started, let's go ahead and do a couple of things first. So we are going to need to make sure that we have our application, the Discord application created. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and click create new application. And I'm going to call this uh, dashboard express OAuth2. Let me actually call this express dashboard OAuth2. We'll create this. And what we're going to do is we're going to get all of the necessary details that we'll need later on. So I need the application ID, which is also known as the client ID. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to store this inside the environment variable. Okay, so I'm going to call this discord underscore client underscore ID. Set that to this value. Okay. I'm going to go into OAuth2 and I'm going to go ahead and copy the client secret. Okay, now you need to make sure that the client secret is actually uh, kept secret. The client ID is fine to be shown to the public because this is not sensitive information, but the client secret must be, you know, kept secret. If for some reason someone uh, gets access of it, if, if it gets hijacked, you just always regenerate it. Okay, and it'll give you a brand new value. Okay, so let me just go ahead and call this Discord client secret. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and set up a redirect URL. So this redirect URL is basically going to be, uh, basically Discord is going to make an HTTP request whenever we successfully authorize with them. And what happens later is Passport will actually receive that request and it'll manage all of the things that it'll need to do to get the access token, the refresh token, and the user's profile. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a redirect URL. So this is just going to be, for now, it'll be localhost. And then we're going to set up the endpoint that Discord is going to call. So it's going to be slash API slash auth slash Discord slash redirect. We have not set up this route yet on our Express application, but we will. Okay, just click save. And let's copy this. And let's save this into an environment variable so we can reference it later. All right. So let's save that and let's close this out. All right, now that we've created the application and uh, let me just click, s let's see. Okay, one more thing that I'll do, of course, is I'm gonna go ahead and go to bot and I'm gonna just add the bot right now so that way we don't have to do it later. Okay, so make sure you do this so that way you don't forget later on. And that's pretty much it. So we can ignore this, we can ignore all this stuff right now. And what we, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and set up passport. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go into my terminal again. We're going to install passport. Okay, we'll install passport discord as well. So passport is the library that we're going to use to authenticate. Passport discord is the strategy that we're going to use. So the mechanism that we're using to authenticate users. Okay, so you must have at least one strategy. All right, cool. So now Let's go ahead and set up Passport. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go up here. I'll import Passport from Passport. And we also need to install the types as well. So let's do that. So we have to install at types slash Passport. So yarn add hyphen D at types Passport. And we'll also do the same for Passport Discord. All right, there we go. So that error should go away. Perfect. All right. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and call app.use. We're going to reference passport. Remember, we imported up there. We're going to call passport.initialize. Okay. And we're going to call app.use underneath. So passport and then session. So this will initialize passport for us. And this will actually configure passport to use session. Okay, because remember, passport takes care of everything for us. Okay, passport is going to authenticate the user. And then what it will do underneath the hood is serialize the user into session. Okay, and then it will just basically modify the request object and attach the user onto the request object. Okay, and then that way we'll be able to use that to see if the user's logged in or not. And that's why passport's really nice. And that's pretty much it. So we're done with setting this up. But we're not done yet. So we still need to set up a strategy. 
So the strategy that we're going to be using is obviously going to be Discord because that's the uh, third party service that we're using to log the users in. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'll create a new file or new folder called strategies. Uh, I might actually put this inside and I'll leave it, I'll leave it over here. So I'm going to create a file called discord.ts. Okay. And we're really only going to have one strategy. So what I'll do is I'll import from passport discord. Okay. We're going to import this strategy, this strategy class. Okay. And also just wanted to mention, if you want to learn more about OAuth 2, where I explain everything in depth from scratch, I actually did like a separate tutorial, both using a local strategy, which is username and password and, or email and password. And I also did one completely separate using OAuth 2 with Discord. So go ahead and check that out. It's, it's in my recent videos. You'll, you'll find it. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and also import passport as well. And let me just move this up top over here and we'll go ahead and do this we'll call passport.use okay and we're going to go ahead and pass in a new instance of strategy okay so this uh this constructor for strategy is going to take in two parameters the first parameter is going to be the options and the second parameter is going to be the verify function let's configure the options first so we're going to need to set the client ID, the client secret, the callback URL, which is the redirect URL, and scopes. Okay. So for the client ID, it's just going to be this Discord client ID. Uh, so we should already have uh, our config function being invoked. So our environment variable should be loaded. So I can go ahead and just run, or not run, reference process.env discord underscore client underscore id okay then i'm going to do the same thing for all of my other environment variables so for client secret it'll be discord client secret and for callback url it'll be discord callback url for scope so the scope part this is important so uh for discord in order to access uh the user's details such as the id the avatar um their discriminator like the four the four digits after after their username you need the identify scope now it's not going to give you the email okay so we have to actually pass in the email scope as well if you want all the guilds you're also going to need the guild scope which i'm also going to add as well because i do need the guild scope all right so the next thing that we're going to have to do is set up the verify function so let's do that Uh, what's going on here? Uh, let me just use the exclamation mark and exclamation mark just to get rid of that undefined, possibly undefined error. Okay, so for the verify function, it's going to take in four parameters. The first two are the access and refresh token, respectively. The second parameter is the profile. And if you're wondering what we can type annotate this, don't type annotate it with any. Type annotate it with the profile interface that comes from passport hyphen discord not from passport because there's two you want the one from passport hyphen discord okay because this will give you the actual platform specific profile uh so, and you'll have type safety because every oauth2 provider has different fields based off of whatever it is like for example twitter might have different fields compared to discord okay and uh let's see verify callback is what we're going to type annotate this done function as Okay, and that is pretty much it. So before I do anything inside this logic, I wanna show you how we can register this right now. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside the create app TS file, and we're actually going to need to import this uh, passport.use. Now I know it's gonna look a little bit weird, but we're not gonna use the import statement. We're actually going to use require. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass in the path to these strategies. I tried using the import statement a while ago. I remember doing this a while ago using import and for some reason it wasn't working. So that's the reason why I'm using require instead. So we import the strategy here. Okay. Um, and all of this should be set up and we should be good to go. I might actually need to do this inside here uh, only because um, 
Actually, no, I think it should be fine. I think this should be okay. Yeah, this should this should be fine. All right, we'll leave it alone like this for now. Okay, so that's pretty much it uh, with the strategy stuff. We're not done yet, obviously, because we still have to implement the business logic, which is you know implementing the uh, the logic whenever the user logs in. But we'll do that in the next episode. Okay, so in the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to configure uh, the auth routes because right now we don't have any routes set up. Okay, we're going to configure the auth routes so that way we can actually invoke Passport so that it can actually redirect us to Discord. And then when we click Authorize, it's going to go ahead and invoke this verify function, which is how we're going to get all the access token, the refresh token, the profile, and everything. Okay, so we'll save that for the next video because we're pretty much out of time. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.